Hey Taurus, welcome to your reading. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Thank you for being here. I just want to start by sending my gratitude and love to everyone who sent me a little message on the community post. It was so special. I got a little overwhelmed with the amount of love I received, but it felt so good. Um, I'm doing great, by the way, no worries. I got a little angry and a little um, vulnerable that day. It's like I had to say something. I noticed that on other uh, YouTubers that I love, not just in tarot, but like everyone is getting so much negativity. And for the first time, I needed to say something. I've never complained about anything. I know how lucky I am to have this platform and also on the birth of Venus Terra, I have such a wide audience. My voice is heard, people are respectful most of the time and supportive, but um, I think that a wave of positivity was necessary for me and I know a lot of people felt a lot of comfort also. So thank you, thank you. Um, let's dive right into this reading. Taurus. Okay. <laughs> page of Cups. Okay. Okay, Page of Cups. I see you. Something sweet. This is the inner child. The Page of Cups is this part of us that wants to be heard and seen. Um, and we have the Two of Swords. Okay, very interesting. So, two water cards. You can see a lot of water here, a lot of water in the back here on the Page of Cups. There's something so not only sweet, but patient here, a patient heart. And I'm hearing some very new territories. I don't know why I'm hearing that. There's something here. With the Page of Cups, there is some type of seed that's being planted, something emotional something new and again i'm hearing some new some very new territories so you might be exploring something new in a connection or it could also be a new feeling like wow i've never felt so comfortable at work i've never felt so comfortable in my body i've never felt so comfortable sharing about certain things there's something that's changing and I think you are able to see the value in that change and you're able to flow with that change instead of resisting it. Okay, interesting. A lot is coming through. So we're going to start this reading because it gets me so excited when I'm, when my channel is open. Okay, we have the Queen of Wands. Yeah, the Witch of the Tarot. I'm not surprised. So you're not resisting anymore. And you're starting to trust more and more your own magic, your own power. Sensuality is a big thing with the Queen of Wands. Um, getting more comfortable in your body. Starting to see the value in you. But not just seeing it using it to your advantage. There's something here about a certain gift, a certain power that you're starting to use to your advantage. Interesting. And with the Two of Swords, I know that this is a period of thinking about this. I think the, what I'm trying to say here is that you're moving into a new season. And when you think about it for a second, like we're so connected to nature. I feel like humans, we also go through seasons. We're very impacted by the seasons wherever we live. Um, when I think about that, I always imagine here in Quebec and when the snow is melting and how everything is brown and ugly and it stinks. And I'm like, what is this? I cannot believe that in two months, or a month there will be flowers everywhere and everything will smell good and the air is going to be fresh. 
this is what's happening with the two of swords intuitively i'm sensing that you are in that period where it's hard to imagine that you're about to step into very new territories you are in the time of learning to trust yourself leaning into your own power and magic and sweetness also um and the page of cups to me is the inner child a thousand percent it was always that way it confirms it every time i pick it and feel the energy and we have the king of wands okay so here there's a power couple i love to connect the queen and queens of each suit together but there's also the clear evolution here because the queen are the nurturing of something and the kings take action. They show up in the world using what they learned in the queen energy, in the page energy. So this is very interesting. Again, this change of season, this clear evolution. The things that you wanted in the past, some of the things, you don't want them anymore. And I think there's a lot of questions coming up in the Two of Swords like, why did I want this thing so much? Why was I fighting for this person to see me, to love me, accept me? Why did I want it to prove myself? Why did I believe that this was exactly what I needed? Because I don't think it's what I need, it's what I wanted. And there's a switch, there's a change in perspective here. Clearly, clearly, sorry, with the two of swords, because twos are about, you know, the expansion. Swords are the mind, so the expansion of the mind. Thinking differently, but not just thinking differently, actually moving in the world, showing up, being of service differently. Okay. And we have the Emperor is here. Okay, let me pick up the cards. We have the Emperor. So a lot of fire here. A lot of fire energy. And Emperor is the new beginning. It's taking up space. It, it feels like it's another clear evolution from the Queen of Wands, King of Wands to the Emperor. It's like, this is it. I'm not waiting for the universe to send something my way. I am making it happen this is what i want this is what i believe in i am done waiting i'm done waiting and i'm filming this a day away from the full moon in leo which is such an amazing day to figure out what we're ready to welcome in full moons are about completion this is the first full moon of the year so what are we ready to welcome in? And here it's like the Queen of Swords, new ideas, a new way of thinking, and also the truth. Figuring out what the truth is for you. And there's something that's been, again, processing like an in-between of seasons. And this is something I'm hearing very loudly, an in-between of seasons. Queen of Swords is connected to boundaries. And I'm going to be honest, Taurus, I feel like right now it's very important to respect your own boundaries. It's very easy to be pissed at people when they don't respect our limits but if we don't respect them ourselves and we keep shifting and changing and adjusting for people to make them comfortable, we're not respecting our own limits and boundaries. So how do you want other people to do that? And that's the thing here. Queen of Swords is like, I'm protecting my energy right now at all cost what we have here yeah ace of swords at the heart of this reading and no ace of cups at the heart of this reading and ace of swords two aces came through together the page is holding the cup the queen of swords is holding the sword so this is very powerful you're not just talking about something, you're actually taking action here and the change that's happening is emotional and mental. 
Why did I trust those people? Again, why did I let this person in in the first place? It was never aligned with my values. It was never aligned with my truth. Maybe my ego was satisfied. Maybe I was in a time in my life where I wanted a lot of friends or I wanted a lot of people around to validate me. Now I can see the value in me. That's why the Queen of Wands was here in the first place. And you know what? I think... Also, the fact that my inner child card came through, it confirms that whatever you wanted as a teenager, as a child, even the version of you from five, ten years ago, it wants different things now. At one point, you try to find love in other people. Maybe you try to find your own self-love in the eyes of other people. Well, if I have so many friends and if so many people adores me, like I don't have to work on my own self-love. Like they do the work. And the shift here is very clear. I have to give that ace of cups to myself first. And that's what matters the most. And when I'm able to do that, I'm able to show up in the world as the king of wands, as the emperor. And be of service in a way that is aligned with my values. Not needing love and attention from other people. Look at the two of swords. How much strength a person needs to hold two swords like that? This is mental strength. Physical strength. Emotional strength. There's something so powerful here. And this is you. It's not another person giving you that power. It's you. It comes from the work you've been doing. And I feel like your inner child is celebrating. Like we freaking made it. We're not... We're not trapped in the same headspace. We're not trapped in the same energy. We're free. And we have the nine of pentacles. Yeah, we're free. We're more mature now. Knight of Pentacles has been showing up for the Taurus rating every time I show up for you guys. Because you're able to take decisions now considering your future self. So how beautiful is that? And what it took for you to get there is something to celebrate. It's something to acknowledge. It took a lot for you to get here. And there's still a lot of work to be done again. Since we are mid-season, it feels like. There's a lot more that needs to grow, that needs to transform. And I think you're aware of that. But you don't fear change. You understand the value in it. And I feel that's a big misconception of Taurus. Why do people say that we hate change? That we don't want to change? I understand that we are stubborn. It's like, I have to make up my own mind about something for everything. I don't know for you, but this is truly how I am. I don't care if someone tells me a million times, you should listen to this movie. You should watch this. You should do this. I'm like, I don't care. It has to come from me. The moment I want to do it, I will. I don't like authority. I don't like people telling me what to do. Even if it's just a suggestion, it has to come from me. So this independent energy, I feel like it could, it could sometimes feel like it's stubbornness, but is it really? It's hard to change my mind because when I choose something... I know it's right for me. I don't want to be influenced by other people. And I think that... I think that the emperor is coming through as I'm talking about that. And the two of swords. Is there a moment where you felt like you were isolating yourself because you were so influenced by other people when you were around them? And I know as a spiritual worker, this is something I go through a lot personally. Sometimes I just need to be by myself for a whole week. I cannot 
hang out with friends. I cannot be with strangers because I get so influenced by their energy. And it's hard for me to focus on work. And there's something here that says protect your energy at all cost. You could be going through a situation where you're noticing, wow, right now I'm doing something and it's not what I wanted to do. Where does that come from? Was I influenced by another person? Did someone plant a seed of doubt in my mind? Did someone, again, influence me or made me do something that I did not want to do? You're getting back power. It feels like for a while you lost a little bit of control. And that was scary. And with the Ace of Cups on the heart of this reading, it's all about, again, offering you that cup of love first, always. You're like, even if I get what I want, even if this person reaches out, if my ex misses me and this, everything, the ego is flattered, but you're noticing that it does not fill your cup up. It does not make you love yourself more. And we have the star card. Yeah, I'm not surprised because the star card is the deepest uh, healing energy in the tarot. And I think, I don't think, but I know in my heart that 2024 is the year of love, reframing love. And for Taurus, it's all about self-love, which sometimes I feel like Taurus are blamed a lot for loving themselves. And I've heard that so many times in my life, people saying that Taurus uh, loves themselves too much or they too, they're too real, too confident. And honestly, I think this is very hard for us. It's a very hard space to get in, that place of real, true self-love. Because loving ourselves is not just saying, oh, you're looking cute today, you know, looking in the mirror and feeling confident, feeling cute. This is not necessarily what self-love is. You know what self-love is when... You're challenged by life, challenged by another person, and you're able to show yourself compassion and show another person compassion. I think this is what self-love is, is having compassion for ourselves when we are in our darkest times, when we are not feeling good and cute, when we're doing the shadow work. I think this is where we're learning to love ourselves truly. And the star card is here, which I know there was a tower moment. Was there a painful situation with a, with a, a relationship? Someone who gave up on you? Oof, that felt heavy when I said that. So I know a lot of you are going to relate. Because you feel like someone you loved and trust so much gave up on you. And that was a huge tower moment. And that happened for you to learn to love yourself. And we have the Three of Cups. Wow. Ooh, I have goosebumps now. Three of Cups, if you don't know me, you know, because a lot of people know me from the birth of Venus and already know my style of reading and some of the cards I connect with the most. Three of Cups is my card of invisible family. This is, and it has been for so many years, the card that my guides are sending always in the most random times to say you're protected. What you feel is exactly it. You're getting something here. And Three of Cups to me is trusting what's coming, that you're not supposed to know what the next step is. You're not supposed to know how this next season is going to change you and what's going to be in those new territories that I talked about which I really feel you're about to explore new territories with the Ace of Cups, Ace of Swords. It could be meeting a new person, a new friend. It could be reconnecting also with a, a past person and experiencing a completely new way of receiving love and of also giving it back. So this is this is very deep in my opinion. There's something that just grows 
nonstop. Every time you talk to someone, every time you show yourself compassion, you watch a tarot reading, you do something that's just for your, for your well-being, there's growth. There's so much growth every day. And you can feel it. You can feel how much you're changing. That's very interesting. Okay, let me take another tarot deck. I want to know, what is the Ace of Cups? What is the Ace of Cups? Tell me more. I keep hearing true love. What is true love? A new idea, a new perspective on true love. Ten of Swords, okay. You've been hurt in the past. You've been hurt. And of course, everyone has been hurt in the past at least once. It's so easy for any tarot reader to say that. But I'm sensing that in the recent past, there was this very, very deep cut. And I think it came, it happened with someone that you trusted with all your heart. All your heart. Like this person is a forever person. My ride or die. Why did they have to abandon me? I really feel like there's someone who abandoned you, Taurus. There's a very deep cut here and it's making me sad. I feel a sadness that is not mine. It's so hard to trust when one of the person that you love the most betrayed you in that way. Or did not show up for you the way that you hoped they would. There was so much disappointment here. And I think you're in the process of releasing that. And again, even if this person hurt you tremendously, even if, you know, that was the deepest cut, being able to have compassion for them as a human is so big, Taurus. Remembering that they were once a child. And this is something that really saved me when I experienced so much trauma in my life. Sometimes it's hard to forgive. We have to forgive to find peace within ourselves. But remembering that everyone was once an, an innocent child and that life got in the way and people's beliefs and society and their caretakers and all of the experiences. I don't believe that people were born bad. You can have a completely different idea and sometimes people hurt us and they don't even know it. They don't know how deep the cut is. So I always try, you know, to find compassion. I remember that, you know, they were a child. Um, yeah, and that's something that personally helped me so much, especially when it comes to my parents, because my parents had me very, very, very young, too young to have kids. So I remember as a teenager, this is, this is something that was so important to me. I kept pictures of my parents as kids. And I always remembered, you know, they also been through so much. They weren't perfect. No one's perfect. And even if they made so many mistakes, I know they tried their best. I know they did what they could with what they have. And I'm not saying that works for everyone who hurt you in this life. You know, there are some people still, I'm 34 years old and there are some people that I, I'm not able to forgive yet. I'm just not there yet in my journey. But I feel like here there's a lot of love in a situation. And that could have been to your detriment at one point. Like, I love them so much and they keep hurting me. Why? Why am I not able to release this? And there's release here happening. Oh, look at that. And the tower is here. Um, I was journaling about the tower yesterday. So interesting. Um, I'm still trying to build a new relationship with that card. Because it's, it's not my favorite. And the tower is going to clear everything non-essential in your life. And 
I want to make space for everyone who has a hard time with the tower card. I heard someone in the comments say, every time I pick the tower card, someone died in my life, which is horrific. And I'm so sorry for that. Sending all my love to everyone who, who has fear around this card, because I do too. But I really believe that this energy clears out the non-essential in our lives. Because no card in the tarot is just going to show up and be like, okay, something horrific is going to happen in your life. It's not how it works. We're reflecting on energies here. So I think that you're realizing that some of the things that happened, even if they were so hard to navigate, it cleared a lot of non-essential things in your life. And it could be that when you lose someone you love so much, everything else needs to be considered differently. You know, it's like certain things are not so important any anymore because you experience something so, so difficult. I hope I may, I am being clear here, but... A lot of the non-essential things in your life are going to be cleared out. And sometimes we don't know that they're not essential. We're attached to, you know, toxic things sometimes and behaviors and mater material things that are not helping us to grow in any way. And I feel like a lot is about to be cleared. And again... You're about to explore brand new territories. I want to know why am I sensing brand new territories for Taurus? Hmm. Six of swords. Yeah, look at that. This person is moving on. The swords are coming with them, but they do not weight down the both. And that is so important in the six of swords. If you've been betrayed, if you've been lied to, if, again, the cuts are very deep, they do not take any of your value away. And I think that the fact that you're bringing all of those experiences with you, it's like a bunch of tools in your toolbox. And now exploring new territories, exploring new relationship, new opportunities, new ideas, a new season, clearly, a new way of living life, of loving yourself, expressing yourself. You have so many tools in your toolbox. So those tower moments are not as scary because you've been through so much. And no matter what, you have yourself till the end. And you know that you're going to be able to show yourself compassion. Next time you, do a mis you make a mistake, next time someone hurt you, next time whatever happens... Because when someone betrays us, we blame ourselves most of the time. Sometimes much more than we're going to blame the other person. It's so much easier to be like, why did I trust them? I should have known better. I was such an idiot. I was such a fool. No, I'm a human being. I feel, I love, I chose to trust. And I think that deserves to be celebrated and acknowledged. That you made the decision to trust someone. And maybe that was a bad idea. But still, again, no one is taking away the new tools in your toolbox. And you're becoming a master at handling situation and handling yourselves. And I think you're learning also the type of person you don't want to be in a relationship. Those negative people and those negative comments, I think they are helping us see the type of people we don't want around and the type of people we don't want to be. Yeah, and the Fool is here, of course. The Death card at the bottom of the deck and the Fool card is here, which makes so much sense. Exploring brand new territories. I don't know what it means yet, and I want to give myself the opportunity to discover why I heard this message so loudly in the beginning of this reading. Going places. I feel like if we could fast forward 12, 12 months from now and see 
where we are, we would be so surprised. I think there are a lot of surprises coming up in your life. And it's because there's space for it. When you were spending so much time dealing with that person, dealing with the tower moments, when it was so hard to love yourself and accept the mistake that you made and be compassionate to yourself in those moments, that was all you preparing for whatever is coming up. And the fool also is showing up so much recently. And this is, this is another level of energy. The fool, it's its own energy. It could be literally alone outside of the tarot. It's the soul of the tarot. The whole storyline of the tarot is the story of the fool. It's number zero. It, it's your true authentic self. It's your soul. Who you were before you were hurt, before you were lied to, before society raised you and everything else. And your soul is calling you towards something brand new, brand new territory. And you are invited to trust, to trust in the timing, to trust that, as I said, right now, it's a weird season in your life. You're like, I keep planting seeds. Where are the freaking flowers? They're coming. And look, the fool is holding a lovely white rose here, which is a symbol of death and rebirth. So this is it. The Ten of Swords, the death, the tower, all bring up this rebirth, which we go through all the time. All the time we have to reinvent ourselves and we have to adjust to our new realities and just sometimes not having a person in our lives anymore, not having the same job, not having the same schedule of all. It's like, okay, I need to readjust. And this is also a rebirth. I'm not scared to use the word rebirth because I feel like I've been through so many. And every time when I'm in this liminal space, and again, it's muddy and messy and stinky, and I'm like, how am I going to get out of here? And why is this so uncomfortable? I cannot even imagine. I cannot begin to imagine like the beauty that's about to show up. All the most beautiful things that happen in my life, meeting my husband, getting married, you know, buying my house, my success on YouTube and so many things that I experienced success. And those are not things that I predicted ever, ever in my life. And I've been using the tarot for so long and I've predicted a bunch of stuff. For some reason, I could never imagine clearly as clearly as I, I wanted the beauty. It's something you have to experience. You have to trust and surrender. You cannot try to predict. You cannot obsess. You have to feel it and see it. Because those things are so real, are so beautiful. They're so aligned with your heart and with your truth that they will be surprising you. And I don't think we're supposed to know and predict those things. So let me pick uh, let me pick some Earl Crow cards here for you. Taurus. Mars gazing. Oh, I love this card. Don't second guess what you've already made a decision on. I think this is the first time I'm picking this one. Accept, receive, and explore. It's hard to fully trust when we're learning to let the soul be in the driver's seat. Because this is the duality of life and the fool expresses that beautifully. There's the mind and there's the soul. Our ego, our mind, it wants us to stay in the same freaking space. It wants us to just be comfortable and not try new things. New territories are the worst thing for the ego. It's the worst freaking thing. 
But the soul, when the soul gets in the driver's seat, it's completely different. The mind is going to try to, you know, it's going to second guess. It's going to question. It's going to make you doubt. But the soul knows exactly what's, what it's doing. And I think that right now you are learning to trust that intuition a lot more. You're learning to give yourself a little break. Okay, that's what I choose for myself. Yeah, I might be making a mistake, but you know what? I choose to trust and I know that whatever happens, I'm going to be strong enough and I'm going to be able to show myself compassion. It always comes back to that. Everything comes back to love, love in all forms. And I think we all know that, but we keep forgetting. We keep forgetting that love, this is it. Love for ourselves, love for others. And when I say love, I, I think of compassion. I think of beauty. I think of sweetness. I think of connection and so many things. I feel like love is like this big ocean and there's so many things in there. It's not just this one thing. It's one word that really talks about so many things. And we keep forgetting because we compare and we are online so much and we want material and we want things and we want the best body and the money and the status. Where is the freaking love? <laughs> and I think that 2024 is about to shake us up in that way. You know, I've said that recently to you guys. Remember who the F you are. Well, now I want to say remember what love is. And this is what we're about to explore um, a brand new perspective and a brand new way of experiencing life and navigating life, uh, which is so cool. And also Mars gazing is like the opposite also um, of the Venus wave, the other card that I channel for this deck. Mars is your shadow side. Also, it's the tower. It's the material, the external. It's, it's the depth and, and the mystery and all the things that we don't understand. And the, with the Venus energy, it's like what we can see. It's tangible. It's real. And now we're, we're starting to trust and believe in the things that we don't see. We have to learn to trust ourselves. We cannot always have people prove us things. And the universe, the universe confirms things. And tarot readers and cards promising things. It's not how it works. How do you want to navigate the future properly if you don't read cards for the present moment? I don't know. I don't know. So my friend, I'm sending love. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that this reading finds you well. And I cannot wait to read for you again, Taurus. Take care.